Hi, I'm Gerald, and today we're going to demonstrate how to install PFSense as a virtual machine using VirtualBox software. PFSense is a free and open source firewall that uses a BSD-based operating system. The first step of the installation process is to set up a new virtual machine. And to do that, we'll just click on the new icon up here, and this will create a new virtual machine. And the first step we need to do is to name it, and we'll just name it PFSense. And it asks us what type, and we'll go down here and select BSD, and it will ask us what version. And we'll do um, FreeBSD 64-bit because our ISO file that we downloaded previously is a 64-bit ISO. And then we'll just click Next. Now it asks us for the amount of RAM that we want for our virtual machine. And it's uh, recommending one gigabyte. So we'll just leave it at that. Now it's asking us about the hard disk. And we will go ahead and create a new virtual hard disk now. The um, hard disk file type. We will leave it as uh, VDI, which is the VirtualBox disk image. And it's asking about storage, um, dynamically allocated versus fixed size. Um, just say space on a hard drive, we'll just use dynamically allocated. And now it's asking about file location and size. We'll just leave it at the defaults. Okay, now that we have set up the um, virtual machine, we'll go ahead and click on settings. And now we will set up the ISO file so they can boot up. We start the virtual machine. And to do that, we will click on this um, optical drive right here and then we'll click on this. And now we'll go to choose virtual optical disk file so we can select the ISO image and we have some ISO files that we've already downloaded so we'll just go to PFSense and then click on the PFSense ISO that was previously downloaded and this uh, connects the ISO file to the virtual machine now we'll go to network and we'll set up the network adapters adapter 1 we want to make sure it's enabled and we'll go down here and select bridge adapter and we'll for the name we'll go down here and click on the um, Intel gigabit network connection which is our LAN connection that uses the Ethernet and the uh, bridge adapter will connect our virtual machines network adapter to the host machine network adapter so that we can connect to the internet. Now we'll uh, set up adapter 2. Adapter 2 we'll go ahead and enable it and we'll go down here and select internal network. This adapter will be used for our LAN only connections which will have all of our virtual machines. And what we can do is um, Type in PFSense as the name of the uh, network that we want to use. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can go ahead and start the virtual machine. And uh, PFSense is booting up here. And the first thing we should do is uh, press I for installer. And it uh, gives us a message, you know, we can press R to enter recovery mode or press I to launch installer. And we want to launch the installer, so press I. 
Now we have the configure console menu and we'll just go and accept these settings and it's asking us to choose one of the following tasks to perform. We'll just go ahead and do the quick and easy install. And it says easy install will automatically install without asking questions and that is what we want. So we'll just click OK and now it's installing the files. Okay, now it's asking if we want to install a custom kernel or the standard kernel, and we'll just go ahead and do the standard kernel. Okay, I'll go ahead and get rid of these little messages and make it bigger. Okay, it says this machine is going to reboot, and we need to remove the uh, CD or the ISO file from the optical drive. So we'll just go ahead and reboot. And when we restart, we'll go up here to the devices, click optical drive, and we'll uncheck this right here, which will remove the ISO. And we'll wait for this to completely shut down before we remove the ISO file. Okay, now it's booting up. Okay, now we have our menu, and um, right here it tells us that we have the WAN connection on EM0, and we have a um, IP version 4 DHCP that is uh, getting its IP address from our home router. And the currently assigned IP address is 192.168.1.16 with a slash 24 for the subnet. And our LAN is on EM1 and it currently has no assigned IP address. So now what we want to do is go ahead and set the IP addresses. So we'll Go down to option two to set interface IP addresses and ask which um, interface we want to set and we'll go ahead and set number one for the WAN and it asks us configure IP version 4 address WAN interface via DHCP and we will go ahead and click no on that because we want to assign a static IP address and it asks us to enter the new WAN IP version 4 address. And since our home, my home network assigns um, IP addresses from DHCP up to .100, we'll go ahead and assign this as a static IP address of 101, which is outside of the range of DHC, DHCP addresses. So we'll just type in 192.168.1.101. Now it is asking us for the subnet. And we'll just go ahead and click 24 for this, which um, will give us a 255.255.255.0 subnet. And it says for a LAN, enter the new WAN IP version 4 upstream gateway address. This is the IP address of the um, our home router so that we can access the outside internet. So we'll type in 192.168.1.1, which is the address of the 
default gateway on our router. And it's asking if we want to configure an IP version 6 address for the WAN interface and we will click new. Enter the new WAN IP version 6 address. And we'll just click enter for none. Do you want to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol? And I'll just click no. And it's currently saving the changes. And it has, um, right here, we can see that it has set our IP address to 192.168.1.101 with a 24 um, subnet. And we'll just click enter to continue. Now we want to assign the um, LAN interface's IP address. So we'll just go ahead and click 2 on that. Then we'll select 2 for LAN. And it says enter the new LAN IP version 4 address. Okay, for the LAN, we need a different subnet so that all of the computers can be separate from on the LAN. They can be separate from the WAN and the outside and other networks. So we'll just type in um, 192.168. We'll do dot 200 as a new subnet, and we'll do dot one for the first um, IP address. Now it's asking us for the um, subnet mask and we'll do 24 for that which is a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask and it says for LAN we'll just press enter because uh, we do not need anything here it says um, enter the new LAN IP version 6 address and we don't need an IP version 6 address so we'll just click enter for none and it's asking, do you want to enable DHCP server on the LAN? And I will go ahead and click yes here. Because that will give us the option to use DHCP if we want to or to use um, static IPs. And now it's asking, enter the start address of the IP version for a client address range. And what we'll do here is we'll start with... Um, Let's start with um, 100. So we'll do 192.168.200.100. And this will give us the ability to use anything below 100 from, you know, 192.168.200.1 through 192.168.200.100. Those will all be, I guess it would be 99. But uh, those would be all um, addresses that we could use as static addresses on like servers or whatever. And anything above 100 from 100 to our end address would be a DHCP issued address. Now it's entering, asking us to enter the end address. So we'll do 192.168.200.200. 55 would be the last, so we'll just do 254. And it's uh, asking us if we want to revert to HTTP as the web configurator, and we'll click no. Okay, it's telling us that we can access the web configurator by operating the following URL in your web browser. So basically, we'll when we install an operating system, we can open up a web browser and enter 192.168.200.1 and that will go to a web-based configuration utility for uh, PFSense. Now saying press enter to continue, so we'll do that. And now we can see that right here, our WAN IP address is set and our LAN IP address is set right here. And our LAN IP address is set to 192.168.200.1, which 
with a 24 subnet mask. Okay, next what we can do is um, test this. So we'll click 7 to ping a host and it'll ask us to enter a host name or IP address. So what we'll do is we'll do 192.168.200.1 to kind of test that. And that's basically pinging ourselves and everything worked fine. And we'll press enter to continue. We'll do it again. And we'll test the outside internet. So we'll just type in www.google.com. And that should ping uh, Google's web server or website. And looks like it was successful. You know, we'll just click enter to continue. And everything should be um, set up properly on PFSense so that we can use our internal network and also connect to the um, external internet networks by using uh, PFSense. So this completes the installation of PFSense as a virtual machine in VirtualBox.